Menahan. Welcome to Talk Cosmos, the show where Sue Rose Minahan and her panel of guests bring you leading edge astrology conversations through a journey of soul growth patterns connecting astrology's energetic cycles. Get ready to understand your path in the cosmic roots of the stars. Welcome. This is Sue Rose Minahan for Talk Cosmos and Insightful Conversations. And today is October 8th. We are going to be talking about the solar eclipse at 21 degrees Libra coming up on the 14th. And it's life's renewal. It's always an event that pairs up with the lunar one two weeks later. And there's two sets. This, But this particular solar eclipse is the very first one uh, with the nodes in Libra and Aries. And it happens to be at the south node because the south node is in Libra and it's a Libra eclipse with Venus as its ultimate ruler. It's exciting. There's many things to discuss. It is an eclipse, I will say, that is in the middle of its 71 eclipses over a span of 1200 and some years, meaning it's a total eclipse. And it will be seen in quite a few places, not in Hawaii where I am, but it will be in all the way from Oregon. In fact, we have a friend, Amanda Pierce, who's on another panel, is going down to Oregon to check it out. And it'll go through 29 different state parks all the way through Texas into Mexico and down through the lower Central America into Northern South America, besides the ocean, of course. Eclipses are quite a transition point. We'll get into that because now we're ready for archetypal symbols. Synthesizing the new moon consciousness through archetypal Sabian symbols, numerology, lunar mansions, tarot, and astrology, all together illuminating a new moon vision story, this is your Archetypal Symbols panel. I'm Sue Rose Minahan, collaborating with guests weekly since 2018. I'm an evolutionary astrologer, consultant, workshop facilitator, and lecture speaker. I'm a Dwarf Planet University graduate, charter member of Kepler Astrology Toastmaster Club. I have an AA degree and a fine arts music degree in jazz. I'm a certified color energy life coach, a writer, artist, musician, and ardent mythologist, a student of esoteric philosophies and life. I'm Elizabeth Liz Machette, a professional astrologer, intuitive, numerologist, and tarot reader. I'm a certified sacred healing counselor, providing nurturing in-depth consultations for individuals and couples. I'm an author, blogger, speaker, and international Reiki master and teacher. I create safe space in which to explore the deeper patterns of your life, to clarify your current circumstances and help you find your best path forward. And I'm Justin Crocodelzi, an archetypal Jyotish astrologer, yoga and meditation teacher, and author. I combine both Western ancient astrology and modern psychological astrology with Eastern Vedic astrology, and I specialize in predictive, electional, and karmic astrology for individuals and couples. I also do in-depth astrological research into arcane astrological concepts, focusing on the mystical, occult side of astrology. Eleanor Roosevelt once said, Yesterday is history, tomorrow is a mystery, and today is a gift. And that's why it's called The Present. Now's the time by Charlie Parker. Great jazzes, yes. Hi, Liz, and hi, Justin. It's so good to see you both. Hi, it's good to be back. <laughs> yes. You know, I hadn't mentioned it, and I know it's a little off from our panel, but one thing led to the other, which it always does, at least especially for Gemini's as it goes, but the <laughs> sun and the moon, right? The sun and the moon being as it is an eclipse and it's that 
tango, you might say, between the three, earth, sun, and moon. So I can't remember why, but it was fascinating, the result that I Googled sun and moon and the mythologies of them. And of course, as it's evident, every culture has a story about the sun and the moon. And often they're brothers and sisters, siblings. It, it, it goes on and on about, and sometimes they flip, you know, the, right. It was, you know, that the sun is the sister and the moon is the brother. Although in Western, it seems like Diana, because the moon has many names. And that's one thing that one realizes in the mythology, that it's not different ones. It's just different names, just as we do for snow. It's uh, icy snow, it's, it's, it's powder snow, et cetera, that type of thing, right? But so Diana, she births the moon, I mean the sun, right? And I think that came actually from Egypt. So I'm morphing around here. And I'm just trying to remember what it was that I wanted. To, it says, a legend says that the sun and moon have always been in love, but they could never be together because as soon the moon rises at sunset and the sun just at dawn. So in the infinite goodness, the almighty spirit created the eclipse as proof that there's no impossible love. Now, isn't that beautiful? <laughs> I just love it. I hope that connects. All right. Well, if you have a comment, go ahead. Otherwise, we'll get. Yes, Justin, do you have you bursting with something? Any thoughts? No, I would just. You know, it's it's interesting as you're saying that because when you're really thinking about it, it's very. It's not often that the sun and the moon are that we see them. It's not often that we see them at the same time in the mm -hmm. sky. You know, I mean, right. many times they are, you know, during the day, you can't see the moon sometimes, but it's there. It's so bright, you know, but but when we actually see them come together, that yes. union, um, you know, and of course, as we know, eclipses portend the beginning and end of cycles. So um, but I, I think I think yeah. I love what you bring in. It's always important to look at the mythology of of the two luminaries, you know. Indeed. And there's so many. And they, of course, correlate. And it just shows the wonderful thoughts. Liz, did you have a thought or should we go to the slides? I just wanted to say it's like a cosmic dance. So I love it. Thank you for sharing. Ah, I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> I love it. Well, folks, this is Life's Renewal, 21 degrees, 7 minutes Libra solar eclipse. And we have Liz Machette at alightpath.com. And we have Justin Crockett Elsie, just exactly as his name. And he's also on Facebook. So we have here opportunity for a renewal. And as Justin just said, it's a transition point of endings and beginnings. This particular one is in the element of air, which is communicative. We all share it. We all breathe it. And it's partnership among many things. It's a big archetypal energy. But partnership and self and other is huge. And it's cardinal. It's an action. You know, you don't just sit on the fence, right? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So here, why us doing this? Archetypal symbols panel, we synthesize this new moon, or in this case, solar eclipse, astrological meaningfulness through many metaphysical systems. They all relate. In fact, Liz, you were telling of a story of one of your early great teachers. It was on a, I think Chris Brennan, you were mentioning, brought an old UAC from early a, days. Mm -hmm. A documentary on the 1986 and um, one of my first teachers, Robert Buzz Myers, talked about all the symbolism of the tarot and the I Ching and astrology um, and bringing it all together. And they're all important. I love and, that. And to have knowledge of all of them yeah, as Kabbalah. much as you can. And Kabbalah. Yeah, I mean, there's tarot. many, many. Mm -hmm. exactly. You mentioned that. I remember in that conversation. So really, we have chosen a number of them because they illuminate this transitional consciousness as it is for the solar eclipse. 
And of course, we'll go into those. And by the way, if you've noticed this painting, I've changed it. It is a public domain. It's Apollo, the god of sun and light, and additionally, poetry, healing, music, on and on. And an eclipse is when the sun and the moon is there's the three in the numerology, the two add up to three. And I'll have you two talk about it. But I realize that that's the sun, the moon, and the earth. And it's when the orbits intersect, one of the nodal, nodal means join or meet, the, these orbital paths meet. So it's a point. There's nothing there, but there, it's meaningful. You know, things have meaning that we can't see and touch. It's spiritual. It's, it's the essence of all. So at any rate, they create this where the light is shut off, either from the sun or the moon. Well, and the three to me is like a triangle, um, like a grand trine. In astrology, we have trines, but it's a triangle. And so the three parts mm -hmm. supporting each other. And it's, you know, about community um, coming together of great minds, joy, happiness, celebration. Um, so go ahead, Justin, you can share now. Yeah, okay. Well, no, I was going to say, you know, and if we break it down, the 21 or 12, you know, Verse Visa in, in, in numerology, two represents partnerships, relationships, very Libra energy with the two. And then the one represents self, which is the Aries energy. And this is really indicative of where the nodes are at right now to the Libra, one, the Aries. And it's always about, you know, um, you know, typically when people are born on the 21st, they'll sometimes a lot of times put relationships before their self because the two mm -hmm. comes before the one or vice versa if they're born the 12th then it's self within before the relationship so it's it's sort of an a, a larger conceptual theme that we're going to be dealing with right now is these nodes are here and it, it's interesting that the moon is actually at this 21 degrees right now all about relationships and self as we begin this new cycle very good and 12 degrees is reminds me that I wanted to mention that when the sun is within 12, the new moon is within 12 degrees of the lunar node, there is an eclipse. So, yeah, I, oh, wrong direction. <laughs> <laughs> We're going backwards and forwards here, aren't we? All right. The tarot. The number 11 for justice. Liz and Justin. That's the ahead. Libra card. Um, I always think of it as uh, the law. And I, you know, the scale is, you know, they say to measure your heart with a feather to see, to see. And then, you know, the justice card is holding the sword upright in the other hand. So to me, it's like connecting the center of the universe to the earth. It's like this connection going on and mm -hmm. it's a lot about relationships too. So, and balance. Yeah. 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 Th that very fact, I know that that's from Egypt, which Justin having lived there, of course, is also in tune with and can talk about, but in the mythology that the hearts, that's how they were measured so ancient and old and such a beautiful analogy i just love that because if it's the feather of course and many reasons why we come back and back to to refocus on our inner self this is an eclipse on the south node so it is a matter of releasing what part of relationships have we maybe thought of the other person to such a degree that we're forgetting about ourselves. It is that dialogue between our own relationship with ourself. But here, for law, relationships, truth, cause and effect, and balance. Balance isn't always 50-50, but it, it's like pH, right? I think of <laughs> pH a lot. Any thoughts there, Justin, you want to add? No. All right. Well, the tarot, it's interesting about the sword because that would be very Aries. It cuts. It makes a dividing line. And to me, that also makes the cardinal cross with Capricorn of judgment and 
the processing of cancer. Would you say yes? To yes, that? and it reminds me like the sword of truth. And mm. um, in most major arcana cards, it's the 11th card, but in um, some of the old decks, it's the eighth card, the eighth trump. Yes, as you can see, even on this particular photo that I took, it has written up there eight. Somebody mm -hmm. wrote eight. I, I have my own deck. I was almost thinking I could just photograph each one. But <laughs> this was, I think, from Wikipedia and a freebie, so it's okay to do. Now we're at Justin's territory. Yorish lunar mansions and the chakras, which are these little constellations of stars that the moon goes through as it orbits Earth because there's 28, right? Is that right? Yes. Justin? Yeah, and they're they're known as the lunar mansions. And so uh, when we look at Jyotish, we're talking about Vedic or sidereal astrology, Eastern astrology. And in this particular one on the next slide, this uh, this particular nashatra or uh, constellation that this moon is in from the sidereal or Vedic astrology perspective is in the nashatra of Chit uh, Chitra. Um, which is actually, it's even though, you know, in the Western chart, the moon's in, in Libra, but in the Eastern chart, it's in Virgo. But there's really, there's really no difference in the energy that, that, that plays out. At it. And this Chitra and the Chakra is um, called the Star of Opportunity. And some of the mm -hmm. key themes are um, craftsmanship, um, details, compartmentalization, design. And the ruling planet is Mars, and the ruling planets are the ruling deities. Arch these two ruling deities are considered celestial divine architects. So if we put it in perspective of real life, a lot of times if people have their moon in this nashatra, the they'll tend to be much more detail-oriented or even mm -hmm. into like doing things like working with jewelry or the finer details of things. So when we look at it, the bigger picture of where we're going to talk about this moon in Libra, we could see how this uh, period of the shift in a cycle is a, a, a time of opportunity and a time where we're able to use our skills and build something new or design something new that we want, whether it's relationships or whatever that is. It is interesting too that Mars is the ruling planet. Oh, yeah, because yes, as, as I didn't want to bring this up just yet, but Mars is really close to this eclipse, uh, you know, to the south node. So we have that, that lineup of Mercury, the sun, moon, south node, and Mars kind of all in a line. Um, so yeah, that, that's somewhat. So there, as to, I think maybe Liz mentioned it, or you mentioned it about taking action, because Mars mm. is about taking action. And, and so there's some, some action-oriented aspect to this new new cycle that's so helpful because action is what manifests our directions just even a little teeny step and i will explain to people sidereal is to the fixed stars whereas the the um tropical is according to the uh well i'm thinking the equator and the tropics and 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 yeah the Procession of the equinoxes. Yes. Procession. And so yeah. therefore there is a difference. Yeah. At the moment. Okay. So another factor, all throwing in this together, this combination is Sabian symbols. They were channeled originally in 1925 by spiritualist medium Elsie Wheeler and astrologer Mark Edmund Jones. And they represent a form of archetypal symbols because every Sabian symbol is an image and a story. And it portrays a spiritual essence for each one of the degrees. And we present several. It's a little beginning past. It's present, past, and future. And as far as how we approach it, which is a traditional method, is starting at the ascendant that easterly horizon point, and then going to the midheaven, which is the highest midheaven, which isn't actually the highest, but it's the midheaven, and then the new moon itself. I keep remembering we're not here to 
explain everything about astrology. Just keep moving on. <laughs> There's so much to learn as to what these all represent. So the ascendant is for the East Coast. We're here in the United States. Canada shares the same. Both our capitals are on the East Coast. And so it represents that. We could have used an Aries rising. But we have an ascendant. And it's in Capricorn, 13 degrees and 48 minutes of Capricorn. And so therefore we're using 12, 13, 14, and 15, a spread to go ahead with that. Capricorn 12, I'll begin. And we'll illustrate a little bit of the meaningful, but it's an illustrated lecture on natural science. And it reveals little known aspects of life. So it's the ability to explore unfamiliar realms and discover the laws underlining the complex nature, the processes of nature. And the key word is exploitation. So that's kind of the backbone of where we're coming from. And Liz, do you want to do the next? Capricorn 13 is a fire worshiper, mediates on the ultimate realities of existence, the subjective quest for ultimates beyond the interplay of life and death process, a will to transcendence. Do you have a comment about that or should we? Because that is at the 13 degrees. So we've moved from exploitation of looking at the world, I suppose, in a scientific way. Would you say that, Justin? And then... Now we're uh, trying to tr transcend. Is that back to spirit? Maybe. Do you think? Well, I I was going to say let's let's look at the next one. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Yeah. So the Capricorn fourteen, an ancient bas relief carved in granite, remains a witness to a long forgotten culture. And the key note is the will to unearth in our culture as well as any culture what has permanent value. And to let go of non-essentials. So we let, what we're looking at here is a historical perspective as it applies to uh, our life and events. Okay. And I don't know quite why we chose 15 now, because really 14 would be, but are we doing 15 also, I guess? I yes. have it included. Yeah, okay. Kind of, kind of 12 and 13 is leading up to, 14 is, we're almost there, and 15 is what's next. All right. Go ahead, Liz. Okay. Capricorn 15, in a hospital, the children's ward is filled with toys. The keynote is the responsibility of society to ensure the welfare and total health of the new generation. And the key word is tender care. So let's unearth all that. <laughs> Either of you can go. <laughs> well, go well, ahead, Liz. You go the, first. Um, uh, kind of exposing the exploitation of things. And then the fire to me reminds me of, you know, let's just burn it to release it. To me, it's, that's a symbol of releasing. Mm. And then, um, you know, to take a look at our culture, you know, carvings, there could be lots of carvings and to make sure that we're taking care of ourselves and the young generation to come. That's interesting. And I know Justin has will have a lot to say, but I'm thinking those carvings, that's artistic and it's also iconic, is a representation, is what people do for a legacy. It's a natural human tendency. Justin, what's your Yeah, thought? and and just for the audience to let them know that, you know, as we're looking at the ascendant here, we're looking at at the point of the solar eclipse, the ascendant is how we're moving forward in the world or how we're stepping into it. And so I think, you know, I get from these, um, uh, which kind of goes right along with everything you've all said, is sort of we're going through this change. And and it's as we're going through this change is about look at having a perspective of what's come before. And uh, because these degrees here, saving symbols, kind of have a bigger picture view of, you know, mm. culture, society, what's going on as we go through here and having some perspective, but Good. taking, 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 uh, you know, making sure that we're taking care of ourselves as we go through this. You Okie know. doke. Well, then we'll hopefully get through this by the half break. Mid heaven is seven degrees 
Scorpio. And so we're going to do six to nine. Six Scorpio. That's the midheaven. That's where we go into our social uh, sharing in a, a career or, or something that's very important to us. The gold rush tears men away from their native soil. The passionate search for new values, which at any level promise a more abundant life. And the key word is avidity, a positive feeling of wanting to push ahead with something. Liz, continue. Scorpio 7 is deep sea divers. The keynote is the will to explore the hidden depths of all experiences and to search for a primordial cause. Deep depth realization is the keyword. And then Scorpio 8 is a calm lake bathed in moonlight, a quiet openness to higher, higher inspiration. So it's quicksands. And just really sort of that Zen moment there. And then we have the last one, Scorpio 9, a dentist at work. Overcoming the negative results of social practices and ego cravings, inventiveness. I guess in dentistry is really remaking structure of the mouse. So once again, how would we, in this sense, these four that are relating from avidity to depth realization, quiescence, quieting, and inventiveness. Go ahead, Liz. Well, it's just taking stock of resources and what we have available to us um, and taking um, and meditating on that or just contemplating that before we move forward because our resources are very valuable, but what are we going to do with them and come up with a new invention perhaps or a new way of using them? Scorpio is deep. It, it does yeah. have that internal investigative business and I, and, yes. and I would and I would agree you know we look at the mid heaven just for the audience is really a lot of times our higher goals are what are our goals are and, and what we're really trying to accomplish here and that I always find in people's charts when there's that deep sea diver and the gold rush it's that need to kind of go beyond norms mm. and kind of search and explore and I think that's what we're you know, in we're giving the the uh, I think the with the solar eclipse here, I think there we're giving the uh, the opportunity again the star of opportunity here to to accomplish what we want to accomplish, but that that there's that inventiveness calls for strategy, strategic thinking a little bit, and 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 meditating as Liz mentioned, um, meditating on that calm lake, you know of how we how we want to accomplish our goals but that we can do them all very good because the capricorn has the goals just generally as an archetype it wants to go forward but the scorpio is a sextile energy of the deep water of 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 emotion of past and and the beyond the hidden parts you know with pluto there to to, re to get that opportunity i love it the new moon itself, 21 it's time for a degrees break. Libra. Oh, rats. Okay, <laughs> sorry, folks. Well, well, why don't we just run through this? Can we run through this quick or do we want to come back to it? We'll come back to it. All Let's right. come I'll, back. I'll, I'll, very good. Thank you. We're eager. We love you. And we will be back. So I trust you will too. This is Archetypal Symbols with Justin and Liz. Thank you. While we take a break from this week's edition of Talk Cosmos, let's take a look at this cycle's archetype. We are currently in the Yang period of Libra, ruled duly by Venus. By leaving the lower hemisphere of the self, the energy of Libra enters the arena where the completed self meets the other than self to form a relationship based on partnership. As a cardinal air sign on the descendant angle, represented by the equinox of equal light, Libra's energy learns through comparison and relationships, with the intention to integrate duality and polarities.
This is Martha Norwalk, every Sunday morning, beginning at 9 a.m., thanks in part to Dr. Nels Rasmussen at HealingMinistryForAnimals.com, we cover the world of animals. This week, October... Talk Cosmos brings you leading-edge astrological conversations with hour-long programs each week on KKNW. The show goes live every Sunday from 1 to 2 p.m. Pacific. Talk Cosmos weekly programs are also available to watch live on Facebook and YouTube, along with daily chats throughout the week on the Talk Cosmos YouTube channel. While you're there, make sure you click like and subscribe buttons so you can get the full Talk Cosmos experience. Or, if you'd rather listen to the show archives with audio only, the entire podcast collection since 2018 is available on most podcast carriers. So, grab your coffee, tea, or kombucha, and enjoy the show. Bringing good vibes to the Puget Sound and the world. Alternative Talk 1150. Okay, we are back again. And I guess we need the screen out because there's a couple check if we can. Thank you so much. Well, we'll just go right into these Sabians and then I'll address just as the what you're doing with your retreat later, uh, Justin. So we have the Sabian symbols for the sun and moon at Libra. 20, a rabbi performing his duties, the ability to draw on the power of an ancestral tradition in order to serve and inspire one's fellows men. So this is where we're coming from and it's inherited wisdom. And I think there's several, so I'll do the second. So the 21 itself is a Sunday crowd enjoying the beach. A reviving, reviving contact with mother force of nature and social togetherness. The key word is oceanic feeling because it's born of attunement to the basic rhythms. Liz, go ahead. Okay, Libra 22 is a child giving birds a drink at a fountain. And the keynote is the concern of simple souls for the welfare and happiness of less evolved beings who thirst for life renewal. Solicitude. And then Libra 23 is Chantelier's voice heralds sunrise, a creative and joyous response to life's processes. So it's really how we respond to life's renewals. Mm. And we added 24. It's a, if it has, again, sometimes that's why, the south node, because the south node is 24. Oh, yes. Very good. A butterfly with a third wing on its left side. So it's this ability to develop for inner strengthening, a new response to our basic life situations. It's original mutation, which really isn't that all of existence. It's this evolution constantly to adapt which happens at every moment. We make new choices. Nature makes new choices. Yeah. What's your ta overall take of this sun, moon? Whoever wants to speak first. Liz, maybe? Well, using wisdom, knowledge, history, um, you know, to have that as a background and to, like, it kind of is, echoes the midheaven in a way of, you know, renewal <coughs> and new beginnings and life's renewal. It's like, there's this big opportunity um, with this eclipse <laughs> to have these new beginnings and to create things in a new way. It's like, we have electricity and we have solar electricity and wind electricity. And we've had those for a long time, but it feels like there's even gonna be more innovation to whatever that is. Maybe we'll be able to harness a lightning bolt and they say for a lightning bolt, you could have electricity for a week in a, a city. I don't know. I mean, it just feels like there's these big opportunities. It's not like things are going away, but it'll just be in a, a better way. I'm, I'm enchanted. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I really am realizing, as we did say, life's renewal. I was thinking more on a personal basis. And of course, it's collective. And we know that ahead of us, the next half year will be 
more connective energies. We already have Saturn and Pisces, which is embraceive of all. And then we'll have Pluto, the transformer, the head coach of the rest of the uh, dwarf planets in air of Aquarius. You know, it's And we have Sedna out there in Gemini, which is our destiny. It's just we're geared. It's all this personal down below that needs to kind of go through the different changes. So it's... I hope and that you, yeah. And you know, I would say to these, I think if we'd looked at what the ascendant was telling us and then what the midheaven was telling us and now what the moon and the sun are telling us there along with the south node, it's all about um to me it also shows a process by what to pay attention to and how things mm -hmm. can turn out for us during this change of uh transition into a new cycle. Um, you know, just giving us those key words to pay attention to, you know, that about uh, thinking about it first and not moving forward so quickly. And I, I, I point out this uh, Libra and I agree with Liz said there, you know, especially with the rabbi, that sort of that wisdom that comes into play as we move into this new, new cycle. I like the Libra 24, a butterfly with a third wing on its left side kind of goes back to that in the chakra which is about this craftsmanship. This mm -hmm. We've got the skills, ability in order to, it's an original uh, mutation of a skill or a craft that we, we're going to, we're going to have the tools that we need and the skills we need in order to, to make changes, whatever we want to in our personal lives at this point. We just have to um, um, look at perspective and 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 not rush into anything but also pay attention to the values of those relationships and i might that inspires me to look at 22 because a child giving birds a drink at a fountain is very imaginative it's that happiness of you know the thirst of life renewal what is renewal but imagination and joy and experience at every moment so it really relates very well with this entire innovation Going ahead, oh, now to ask, Justin, what, tell us please, I will share immediately that next week on the 17th and 18th, you are in a online healing retreat that Marie O'Neill is sponsoring, and you're going to be one of the presentation. Yeah, I thought we'd do what? this later, but Liz has got no. some stuff too, so. No, don't I want to know, I'm Liz asking. Here. But I'm, I'm going to, okay. I need yeah, to know. Murray, who's also, you know, Murray, who's also an astrologer, along with Michael Bartlett and Jennifer. Yes, and Sarah. I need to know about you. <laughs> okay. Well, what's we're, your show about? <laughs> we're, we're doing, uh, we're doing a, you know, we're part of the healing retreat and I'm going to be doing a talk. Uh, it's all about transforming relationships. And, and, and when Marie first came about it, I was like, I had just done a mediumship reading with somebody. And a lot of times we think about relationships only in the physical, but that relationships transform when people cross over onto the Excellent. other side. And then we're, so we're going to look a little bit about the astrology and mediumship and, and how we, mm -hmm. and, and, and of spirits and how we can communicate with them and, and, and how we can continue to deal with the transformation of a relationship when, when a, and a loved one is crossed over. Good. I thank you. And then you're absolutely right. I'm never Liz leaving has got out. stuff too. I'm Liz never leaving stuff. out Liz. You're I just ask you first. I am trying to keep our timing so that we can <laughs> we have so much to do. So yes, I'm I'm glad you're thinking. Uh Liz, go ahead. I'm doing consultations at this time and working on um some upcoming things for the later fall, early winter. Oh so good. thank you. And that'll be at alightpath.com. Or if you just Google Liz Mouchette, she pops right up just like Justin. And I'm so glad to have both of you on the panel always. R21, and it should be 07 instead of 08. Yeah, it's 07. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was a little typo. Libra, new moon at all these different time zones. So it's going to be until it gets to Australia. It's going to be on the 14th at these different hours. And it's in the East Coast. It's at 1.55 Eastern time. 
in London, it's going to be 6.55 at night. And in Sydney, it's going to be 5.55. And West Coast, we haven't forgotten you. It's just almost at noon, 11.55. It, there is a seesaw pattern. That's when they're bunched up in two opposing groups, which is very Libra, isn't it? This group and that group, which has been going on for a while because the planets take a while to, to move through their orbits. And we have three now, actually four that are in direct motion. There's Because as of the tenth of the month, Pluto went direct. So we have the inner planets, the personal planets, Mercury, Venus, and Mars, along with Pluto. But all the rest are retrograde. And we have the dates here for when they will go direct. And you can see those. I have here also, for those that are on YouTube, a little grid with the various planets and asteroids, centaurs that are not the common nine planets. So Chiron's at 17 Aries, Vesta's at 6 degrees Cancer, and you can read that too. The highlight, the transit highlights, we have a T-square. Venus is ruling this particular Libra eclipse. And there's a T-square that involves Pluto squaring the nodes as it has been, but yet now it has a team of other people. At the south node, it has the sun and the moon, along with Spica, which you were meant, of course, this is in, not in the sidereal, which is Virgo, which you were mentioning, Justin, but it's going to be at Libra, which is 24 degrees Libra, according to the tropical zodiac. And in the north, Chiron, the wounded healer, heiress of inclusivity and exclusivity, along with the north node. And then, of course, we have Pluto is also going to trine in a flow with Uranus. Saturn is a chart ruler, and it too is trining Mars and opposing Venus. So it's giving a lot of flowing action, but also looking at what are our values. And Mercury, which is in opposition, and Jupiter, which is in opposition. And we'll look at those charts. So let's look at the chart this one, the first one is going to be all the activating driven energy. So it's Venus. I'm not going to read them all for time's sake, unless you think we should. Should we no, just keep going? Okay. So here's the chart for those. And again, this is at 155 Eastern time, just in a few days on the 14th of the month. And it's at T-square. Yeah, asking for action and adjustment and, um, a, you know, adjustment and change. Yeah, and what really jumps out to me about this whole chart, and I know there's a T-square, but for me, it's the Mars thing going on here because Mars is trining Saturn, but it's squaring Pluto. And mm -hmm. and Saturn is actually in a triangulation. You don't see it on this. There is a trine between um uh yeah that's the another slide but go ahead yeah the yeah. mars saturn and then uh, and mars uh, there's a there's a south node to one of the planets so there is a thing about action here as liz says it's really there's a lot going on about action but with mars uh tr trining saturn which is retrograding and then it's squaring pluto again i think it's it's not about quick action it's but it's it's about it back to what we were saying before is strategic thinking before taking action uh because there's going to be some something that says well before you take action you got to change something here with mars squaring uh pluto and triangulating uh saturn opening up space i was just hearing today if you're going to do anything it, you you to fill we all know if you have a cup and it's filled with water you can't fill anymore you need to empty you need to release so because it is at the south node which is sun and moon sun is our will moon is our emotional boundaries of our habits of everything and then you have spica which is a fixed star which is of abundance it's really a, a very powerfully helpful star used in navigation. We're going to talk about it in the 19th of November. 
and then to have the thought process and the action, it's like we really can take steps to make space to find out where in our relationships, right? It's Libra. Is it that we have been perhaps not centered on the values that are central to our needs, our moon? You know, it's very internal. It's a really many internal steps to to prepare for this transition to renew our life. Well, and to me, this um, solar eclipse is talking about um, the United States and Canada, basically, and their relationships to other countries in the world. So it'll be, you know, there's a lot of chaos going on in the news right now. And so it'll be interesting to see what evolves over um, the next few weeks, um, even the month, and even up to a couple of years of what transpires from this point forward. Because it's in the ninth house there, so. Oh, yes, of law. Exactly. That gets back to the tarot, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the, the card, the justice card. Absolutely. The philosophies. And Hamea is up there, that little green symbol, which is in Scorpio now, of rebirth, the Hawaiian goddess, which is a subtle, long-term energy of, of deep renovation. So well, and since the South Snow's there, it's like we may be reevaluating our relationships with other countries and renegotiating or finding out, okay, these things work and these don't. So now we need to come up with a new plan. And with nature, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. And and I think this is also indicative of, of war, you know, that that mm -hmm. Mars on the South Node. And, and for this, it's at one degree Scorpio, Mars and Scorpio here. So that definitely that's uh, actually for those people who do what is it mundane astrology. I mean, this is sort of an indicator of war that Mars right down the south node in Scorpio. Well, it then it's a matter of choosing your battles. It's because war is like, what is war? War can be on any and every level. And of course we have, we can't forget, we, we will never forget. I mean, just the elephant in the room that there is Ukraine happening besides potentially other things. So I, I'm not, we're not saying that it, there would be some action, but it is a consciousness that is existing because at some point, what is anger or war or determination fighting for a cause? It's to make a stand and realize that this is what values are for well, and yeah, go ahead. And and I might say, if I might just say that, mm, you know, please. that it's not just Israel or Ukraine. You see what's happening in the U.S. Congress. You know, there's this war happening. Thank and you. then you've got people on television uh, even starting to talk about a civil war here. You know, so, I mean, there's this whole there is there is your like you said, there's that 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 action oriented thing happening here. It's how do are we what are we doing with that energy? You know. And it has to be there because I keep remembering talking about we're always going with Sabians before. Well, in astrology, we look behind now and later. And the fact is, is that Pluto at 27 degrees, which it happens to be right now, if you look there, 27 degrees, which is only half a degree away from our natal USA Pluto, mm -hmm. which is 250 years approximately return which has been going on last year. This is like the fifth, sixth. I mean, it's very close in residence. There's vibrational residence here. And what does it resonate? It brings back exactly the get-go from the very start to say, hey, what was it anyway? Was this right? Was this wrong? Just like we do in our heads. It's like a reflection process. And of course, it's moving direct now, but just very slowly direct. I mean, just turned around. And when you look at the, the sky, just to mention to people, it's not just like clicking the, the remote, but it's a very apparently long, it takes slow motion and it's a, from earth. That's how it appears, but that's how we experience it. Meaning that I thank you for bringing up the war, Justin, because if we didn't think about what the injustices were or what our goals are, or what we've learned or how we've moved along, that we can maybe ideally try to, rectify we'd be a miss and there's so many things there's so many things just like with congress like why do we have the filibuster why i could go on why do we have uh uh 
what I'm trying to think of is, is um, oh boy, anyway, a lot of political things. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You're both smiling. Should we go on to the next slide? <laughs> yes. Okay. So we have now the harmonious energy. We've tried to divide this up a little bit so there's not a little bit chunks in chunks, but it's hard. They all relate. So of course we do talk about that. But as Justin was mentioning, Saturn, which rules the chart, this is so interesting to me because the flowing energies is trying in this flow as 120 degrees with Mars that rules the North Node. So it's saying, hey, yeah, the way we want to head off as far as our, our daily activities here of, of just how we're personifying our life, that yes, our direction, our destiny direction of North Node, which is integrating of our personal direction has a push has a shove it's when we're not so uh, which can be good or bad it could be where's the brakes well forward motion <laughs> <laughs> well and i often say saturn's the brake and mars is the gas pedal so it's like you know trying to work with both those even though right now since they're being in trying they're a little bit more harmonious and working together so instead of against each other and spinning out so i like that Anyone want to talk about Uranus, Trine, Pluto, or Neptune, Sextile, Pluto? Those two. I know you brought you brought it up, Justin. I don't know if you had. Well, no, I, and I agree with Liz what she's saying. You know that Mars trining Saturn. Uh, of course, Saturn's retrograding, so there's a there's so there's still a little bit of uh, not mm. too much forward movement with that free flow. Um, but and and as we know, a larger thing, Uranus trining Pluto is big change big flow of change so we wanted everything to kind of slow down after the post pandemic but no little yes. training uranus is saying no things are not going to slow down things are going to continue to change a lot and it feels like that doesn't it yes i mean wouldn't you both agree that it seems like i've stopped wondering just exactly why things seem to be just mushrooming or dominoes just moving forward it's the times of the season would you agree like that when you say Iran is trying Pluto, I think it's just a uh, forward. Well, and all those outer planets kind of working in harmony together. Um, that feels like a good flow there happening and assistance, you know, vision is Neptune and Uranus is change and Pluto <laughs> is things below the surface. So, you know, probably things um, coming to the surface, especially by the end of the year when, um, I mean, Pluto just went direct. So um, things are going to more bubble up to the surface even more, I believe. Well, so this we brings, can make changes. Yes, indeed. And it's hard to always know how to organize the slides, but what you were bringing up, Justin, and what you've talked, all three of us have been talking about, here it is. This is Pluto in action doing the nodes and trining, working on many fronts with many energies so that our process is pretty involved. It's a complex. It needs to have that downtime to kind of pace through it. Yes. Yeah. And I, I would say it's not a fast change, though, because mm -hmm. right. it's, you know, er, you know, Uranus is retrograding. Uh, Mars is squaring, you know, Pluto and Saturn's retrograding. So there is some kind of regulator uh, on on the whole process you know yes yeah it's very true i guess we're about to close i wanted to bring up just the fact so that those people that see online can notice how to always get in touch with us at talk cosmos and you can sign up for the newsletter but also thank you it's here we are. I like to finish just with a couple of thoughts just among ourselves, right? Like, where is all this? It's ahead of us yet. And there's so many incorporations, Sabians. What bubbles up? Go ahead, up? Liz. Go ahead, Liz. Well, to me, like, eclipses are a, an opportunity for great change because, you know, it's like, to me, like a whole moon phase is happening. A 28-day moon phase is happening within minutes or hours. And so to me, it's, I mean, we have super moons, but this is just incredible moon energy to work with for, 
for change and opportunities and, you know, things that you want to start in your life. Go ahead, Justin. No, I agree with you. I love the idea of the details in the mix. It's like, it's somehow what, and the imagination. There's many, many facets here to draw from to manifest because we do have struggles, you know, like you said about with Mars, it's not just a simple birthday cake that we're looking at. <laughs> anyway, but we all have a candle. We can blow it out and make a wish, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, well thank have you. A good, good month, everybody. And we'll see you next month. Yes. Thank you, Liz Machette. And thank you, Justin Crockett, Elsie. And thank you, our audience, for joining us. We do dearly love you and look forward to connecting more and more. So, Talk Cosmos, see you again. Thank you. Thank you for joining us on Talk Cosmos, the show where Sue Rose Minahan and her panel of guests connect soul growth patterns with the energetic cycles of astrology. Be sure to tune in next Sunday at 1 p.m. Pacific time to continue your journey through the roots of the cosmic pathway.